Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to learn about using colored pencils like an artist. We will be using Prismacolor colored pencils, my favorite colored pencils. They work really beautifully to blend together, to layer up, to have very saturated colors. You can get really deep, rich, realistic drawings with these. It's really, truly worth the investment. Trust me. We will be using a set of 30 in my class that I've put together um, that I find work really well for my students to draw a variety of different things and different angles. Using colored pencils like an artist is a little different than what you've used colored pencils like as a student up until this point. So we're going to draw a pair. And if I say, hey guys, we're going to draw a pair, this green pair, most of my students would say, hmm, okay, well... This green looks like the green of the pair. I'm going to use this green and I'll just color the whole thing green. That's not how artists use colored pencils. So my high school students are like, well, I'm going to use this green and I'll color really dark where there's a shadow and I'll leave that part that there's a highlight on lighter. Well, that's a step up, right, than just coloring the whole shape green, but it's still not quite how artists use colored pencils. So then my advanced high school students will be like, wait, I saw in my packet a dark green and they'll use that dark green to shade the dark areas or they'll ask me for a black to shade those dark areas. We're not going to use black at all. You don't even have black as an option in your colored pencil kit from me. We're also not going to use white and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the process today. We're going to use colored pencils like an artist. I'm going to show you how to do that using a green pair as an example. And in that green pair, I'm going to use almost all of these colors. Obviously, I'm going to use a lot more green and a lot less of the other colors, but we use a lot of those colors to build up a really realistic, vibrant, um, complex surface. So take your time with this. Practice along with me. Try some things out. Really, the best way we learn as artists is experimenting. So I'm just going to get you started. Your job as a student now is to experiment and play and see what you can do using the skills and tools and techniques that you already know. Apply it to this new medium and see what happens. Have some fun along the way. Make some mistakes. It's how we learn. All right, lovelies, take your time, listen carefully, and we'll see you in a moment. Drawing with colored pencils is so fun. I love it. It involves a ton of layering, color mixing. There's a bit of a know-how to it. And that's what I'm gonna talk with you about today. We're gonna practice using fruit because they're relatively simple shapes and they come in lots of different basic colors, green, red, yellow, orange, etc. I'm gonna show you the process of using colored pencils by drawing this pair. We start with just a regular pencil drawing, and then we lighten up that pencil line. And then we're gonna go through a process of adding lots of layers to get here. We start by laying out our basic value structure, then we layer that in more and more and start to tone the drawing down, and eventually we get to this point. So for that first step, the laying in of the basic value structure, what I'm gonna do is get three colored pencils, a light green, a middle green, and a dark green. This is where I'm going to start. By the time I'm done with this, I'm gonna use, I don't know, almost all these. <laughs> That's not true, about half of these colors will come into play. These are the colors that I use with my students, and if you look carefully, there is no black and there is no white. We want to make all of our shadows and highlights using the white of the page and dark, cool colors, and we'll talk about that more. For my first step, I'm going to lay in the light greens, the middle greens, and the dark greens, just using these three basic green colors. If you're doing a red apple, you would do the same thing with red. Tricky part with red is once red gets light, what does it look like? That's right, pink. <laughs> so for a red apple or another red object, I would use a dark red. This is my favorite color in Prismacolor, Tuscan red. And then I would use kind of a pure red for both the medium and the light red tones. I would just be very light with my pencil marks here. If you're doing something like a yellow lemon, you're gonna have a nice bright yellow. And then you might use a little bit of a yellow ochre, which is a darker yellow, it borders on brown. Um, and then I have this cream color that could work really nice as the lemon comes into the highlights. 
So just kind of look through what colors you have, pick a light, medium, and dark version of it, and then you're gonna use your mark making to lay down those colors. I'm gonna use my original drawing here as a reference for where my light, middle, and dark tones go, and I'm just gonna lay down a basic hatch to get that started. I build in my lightest values first with my light color, then my mid-tones, and then I come in with my core shadow with my darkest green color. Once you have the basic value structure laid in, your next step is to come in and start building those values in even deeper. You're gonna to continue to use these three basic colors. Eventually, with colored pencil, we're gonna layer other colors and tones into the piece so it doesn't look like a drawing out of a Crayola box. We're going to layer in cool colors into the shadows to push them back more. We're going to tone down this green so it's not so, so vibrant, saturated, um, and it'll look more natural. But for now, we're just going to continue to build up that base green. If I was working on a red object, I'd be building up the base red, yellow, building up the base yellow, etc. Eventually, I'm going to start building in other tones to create a more realistic version of this piece. Just remember that drawing is a layering process. You can use any mark that you'd like in this, whatever makes sense for your piece and for you as an artist. Just layer slowly and avoid the highlights. Notice I'm not drawing anything in the lightest part of my piece yet. This is the point in time when I start to add and layer in other colors into my piece. The green is the local color of the pair, a local color is the color of the object. So if this pair is green, this lid is red, that's the local color of the lid. I'm gonna bring in some colors that aren't green, or if I was drawing that lid, red, to start to push the values deeper in my pair, and eventually I'll bring in some colors to tone down the green and bring it into a more natural space. Because anytime we draw something, there's undertones to colors. So when we're drawing our skin, there's cool undertones to our skin, that we wanna bring in. When I look at my skin, I don't see blue and I don't see purple, but I certainly use blues and purples when I draw skin, especially in the shadow areas. At this point in time, I'm gonna to start to add deeper shadows into this pair. And there's two different ways that we do this. The first way is we use dark, cool colors. So dark greens, dark purples, dark blues. So I have an indigo blue, which is the darkest color that I give my students. And if you look, it kind of looks black on screen, but I have a blue indigo that I use. Um, I have a um, black cherry, which is my dark purple. It's a dark reddish purple, but black cherry. Um, and then my favorite Prismacolor color, Tuscan red, um, is my other dark cool color that I use. So together, my dark green, my blue indigo, and my uh, Tuscan red and black cherry are my go-tos for shadows, okay? So that's step one for shadows. Dark cool colors work well. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to think about doing in your shadow is toning it down. So bringing the color from a pure color, like this is a pure red, a pure blue, to a more toned or natural version. And to tone down color, we use the complement of a color. A complement is the opposite color on the color wheel. So if you don't have a color wheel handy, you can look one up online. But if I'm doing a red, I'm sorry, if I'm doing a, yeah, I'm an art teacher, I know colors. <laughs> if I'm doing a yellow object, its opposite color is purple. I'm using purple to tone it down. If I'm doing a red object, the opposite color is green. I'm using green to cool it down. So I'm doing a green object, kind of a yellow green actually. So I'm doing green, yellow, green. What's its opposite color here on the color wheel? Zoop, reds. So red is gonna be my friend when drawing a green object. I'm not gonna use like very heavy handed red, but I am gonna use red to tone down the color and to push back my shadow. So this Tuscan red is a super handy color to use in my shadows. If I was doing a blue object, its complement is orange, I would be using my Tuscan red again because that's about as close as I'm gonna to get to orange in my dark color. Or I could use a dark brown, like this burnt umber, um, to push back my blue. And same thing, if I was doing blue, I'd be using 
I'm sorry if I'm doing orange, I'd be using my blues to push things back. So dark cool colors and shadows and dark complement in the shadow, okay? Again, you can look up color wheels online pretty quick and easy. So I'm gonna start pushing my shadow colors darker here. I'm gonna start with my Tuscan Red. You might ask, why didn't you use black? Well, black's kind of a dull, dead color, and shadows really aren't necessarily black. They're often cool in color. So try something new, even if it feels uncomfortable. Layer it up slowly, build it up slowly. You can always layer more green on top of it if it looks too blue or too red or too purple. But trust me on this, use those dark cools and your complement. At this point, I've laid in my deeper shadows. Um, I'm a little heavy-handed with my mark making on this. You know, you can be a little softer if you don't want to see as much of the mark in the end. And I've toned down and cooled down my shadow structure, but the rest of my hair still has a really, really vibrant green color, which just isn't accurate to a pair. So I want to tone this down. And I've got a green object to tone down that color so it's not overly bright. I go back to my color wheel and I remind myself that green's complement is red. So I wanna use versions of red to tone this color down. And I've got lots of different versions of red. So I'm gonna grab a whole bunch here to show you what I have for options. Now, I wanna to be toning down the green in this brighter, more light section. So I don't wanna use a dark red that's gonna overpower. Same with the bright. I wanna use reds like these. So I'm gonna use this light color, um, peach, to tone down the greens in the lightest sections. And then I'll use a combination of this pumpkin orange and mineral orange, which I know are called orange, but they're close enough that they're gonna to tone down the greens kind of in the mid-tone areas. So I'm gonna take some time to tone those colors. I'm gonna use a really light touch, and I'm gonna take my time because I don't wanna overpower the green with this red. This is another intimidating step for my students. Don't be afraid to layer in these different colors. It makes a more complex and interesting piece in the end. Once you've toned that color down, you can always come back in if you're like, ooh, I maybe went a little too heavy, and pull some of that original color back over the top. Now at this point, you can see that my pair I'm doing in the video demo today, I toned down the color more than this pair. And you can see that variation that this feels like a little bit more of a natural green. This is feeling very vibrant and pure still. Our next step, once we get to this point, is to either continue layering in the route we've been doing or to go in and burnish. So we have um, some options with burnishing. Burnishing is taking the colored pencil and pushing hard. So far we've been layering lightly. So I could come in and burnish with my dark green colored pencil and get this really dark with that dark green and it kind of mixes all the colors together and it makes a smooth finish. And you can see that smooth finish here on the sample pair. Or if I don't wanna add any more pigment, I can use this. This is the colorless blender um, that Prismacolor carries. It's a great tool. And I'm gonna use that to show you how to burnish. Now you don't always wanna burnish something. Um, this pair has a hard, shiny surface, so burnishing makes sense. But if I was doing a peach, I wouldn't wanna burnish. I would want it to continue to have the soft feel that it does from the layered mark making. So a peach, I would not burnish. A pear, I would. Something soft and fuzzy, I'm not gonna burnish. Something hard and shiny, I probably will. When you're burnishing with a colorless blender, you wanna start in the lightest area. So I'm gonna start on the edge of this white that I've been avoiding, that highlight. And I'm just gonna go back and forth and move around this area. And I'm gonna push with that colorless blender. And it basically blends the color, just like the title of the, the tool. And I'm gonna continue to work out into my darker areas. And you can see potentially that a little bit of that color gets onto the pencil. I'm gonna come up here into this light area before I move back into the dark. You can use any mark to burnish. Notice how it really brightens the piece up as I go through. Take your time. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I, I've 
purchased some new colored pencils. I've got this um, Kelly green, moss green, and then this jade green. This jade green, by the way, is a great color to use for shadows on white objects. It's kind of this really blue-gray color. I would not call it green, but that's what it's titled. So jade green is also a great go-to color with white um, or to do kind of a, a cool gray color. But I'm gonna use these colors to come in and just add a little bit of a dimension to this piece. It's such a warm green over here, that chartreuse that I used. I wanna kinda of cool it down a little bit with these and add a little more dimension to the color. So really at this point, I'm kinda of playing with what I have and continuing to layer up until it's in a space that I really like. Um, and as you're learning to use colored pencils, I highly encourage you in your sketchbook, just play around with them. See what happens when you mix different colors, when you do this mark or that mark, okay? So I'm gonna to continue to layer up some of these. I'll use some of my warm, uh, I'm sorry, my reds to tone down some areas. And I'll probably even pop in with my blue indigo and my black cherry into my shadows to deepen those up as well. All right, there's a lot that happens in this last step. You blend out your mid-tones, you add your light values. When you add your lightest values, do it slowly and carefully. Be really light with your touch so it doesn't get too dark. You avoid the white areas so you don't get those too dark. And you play and push your colors. This is also the point to really apply those mark making techniques back in here so that you can see the textures from the marks. Or to apply texture in general to the surface of your piece now that you've got the value scales built in. This is also where we're gonna add some line quality to bring out the edges. I enjoy line quality with colored pencil because you can really play with variations in the colors. So I'll use my darkest values in the darkest areas and I'll use lighter colors on the lighter side. So you'll see me use different pencils in different places for line quality. At this point, I feel like my pear is done. I could go in if my pear had little spots and things like that and add little bits of those kinds of details into this piece at this point in time. Um, if it had more of a texture, maybe I'd go in and I'd indicate and push back in some of that texture. But I could go in and make those kinds of little subtle details on my piece if they're there. Really, colored pencil work is a lot of layering a lot of playing with marks and color. You need to have a semblance of color theory knowledge as far as color mixing goes. And you can really utilize what you've learned in the process of making your colored pencil pieces in painting. So if you're somebody that hasn't done much with painting, the same mixing methods work with paint as they do with colored pencils. So the benefit to that is if you're somebody that has done a lot of painting, um, you can really apply that knowledge directly to what you're going to do with your colored pencil. So as review, your first step is to draw the object that you're going to draw. So draw the contour. After you've drawn the contour, you're going to pick out a light mid-tone and dark color of the local color. So again, local color is the color of the object. So a light local color, middle, and dark. So for the pear, it was light green, medium green, and dark green. You're gonna lay those value structures in, and then you're going to build, build, build those value structures up. Once you've got your basic value structures built, so you've got your core shadows, your highlights, your mid-tones, you've left your lightest areas alone so they don't get colored out, then you're gonna start to build in your darkest shadows using both dark cool colors and a dark version of the colors complement. So in this case, it was green. The complement is red, opposite color on the color wheel. Once you've darkened up those shadows, you're gonna build out into the piece, and then you're going to start to add tone and variation to the color itself. Do burnishing if burnishing is what works. Once you've got the value structures built in, then you're going to be adding your line quality and pushing any texture that you've started to develop. It's really a fun process to learn. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's well worth it. Enjoy, have fun, and see what you can do. If you're curious what colors that I use with my students are, um, this is the set I put together for them. I think it's pretty comprehensive. It works really well for most objects that they're going to encounter in their drawings. I have the Prismacolor Colorless Blender, 
peach, mineral orange, pumpkin orange, crimson red, Tuscan red, the best color, <laughs> black cherry, second best color, violet, lilac, Caribbean sea, cerulean blue, violet blue, ultramarine, indigo blue, peacock blue, cobalt turquoise, jade green, which is another really great and useful color, pale sage, kelly green, moss green, dark green, spring green, <laughs> chartreuse, cream, canary yellow, yellow ochre, burnt ochre, and dark brown. Enjoy it, my friends. It is a great journey.